Gaming Talk Show, brought to you by The Hive. Where we talk about Let's Plays, game reviews, skits, commercials, and so much more. So remember to bring along a computer so you can watch our videos during your stay in your local vault. So as you can see, we're making a lot of Fallout puns. Why is that, though? Because of fucking Fallout 4, that's why. It's here! It's out! And we're it's We're playing it! Look at our shirts! It's amazing! It is great. So let's buzz in like those giant mosquitoes that like to mutate and try to suck on your chest. We got plenty of things to talk about today. We are giving our first impressions of Fallout 4. We're giving you tips and tricks on how to survive in the Commons Wealth and uh, some features that you may not know about the game. So a little bit of Black Ops 3 at the end as well. So get in your super suit because it's about to get clunky. Or wait, kind of slow. No, shiny. It's super shiny. It's super fucking shiny. So Fallout 4 is here, and two days after the release, Jace and I have combined for a total of 30 hours of gameplay in two to three days. Okay? We're not filthy casuals when it comes mm -hmm. to this game. We are, we are tackling it hard. And uh, before we go too much further into discussion, I want to let you guys know that I am doing a Let's Play of Fallout 4 that is on the Hive Guys Twitter YouTube page. It, you know, he discusses <laughs> all of his highlights in the story. His highlights of everything, pretty much. It's yeah. just completely highlights, correct? It's only highlights. It's fucking funny. So You need to watch it. It's fucking hilarious. So if you've been watching some Let's Plays of Fallout 4 and you're kind of sick of the traveling times that people do just and the like exploring on. and being like, oh, there's nothing no. in there. He takes there. the best moments from that, puts it in a Let's Play, and it's fucking hilarious. So And you, Check you it can out. follow it along, too. That's the nice thing about these highlights is that not only am I putting the funny stuff in there and the action-packed stuff, I'm doing just enough story to bring you along with me. So let's check out a couple of features and some great highlights from my Let's Play of Fallout 4. Come here. <laughs> and that is the extent of my parenthood. I will just slightly tap my baby. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you while you were obviously doing some yoga stretching on the floor. Why are you in the ceiling, Godsworth? Get down. Get down. Hey, get down. Get down. Hi! You're a dog! Look at your fucking ears! What the shit? What the fuck? Holy shit! What is that? Oh my god! Am I out? Oh man! Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no, oh! My dog is obviously indestructible. Hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek. Make sure to check out the rest of the Let's Play. And since uh, Jace was kind enough to give me Fallout 4 as the Let's Play, he's got the next big one. We're excited to announce no it when spoilers. it comes out. spoilers. Just follow me. So yeah, follow us, stick around the hive, and uh, they'll come up pretty shortly. So, now that you guys see some of BP's shitty Let's Play, we're going to talk about our first impressions of that the game. Rude, man. I'm sorry. It's great. It's amazing. It's hilarious. It's his highlights. I'm just kidding. I love you. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about first impressions. Let's talk about story, gameplay, all of that. Start right. us off. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's talk about the story, though, mode, Jason. Okay. Let's, let's tackle it hard. Let's tackle it. Let's do this. You ready? Okay. Pretty much what happens is you're a family man, okay? You're, you're playing with your little kid, and, you, you know, you poke him maybe once, and he cues and giggles. That's the extent and of your You're talking right? to your wife, and you're in a house, and a man knocks under your door. Knocks on your door. He goes... Sign up for Vault 111 today. Make sure you're safe. Do it now. Coincidentally, as that happens, a nuke explodes. And he's like, good thing you signed up because the vault's right up there. Go. 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 So you run up there. You're passing everyone. And you're just like, yeah, bye. Y'all going to die. I'm going to save myself. You go to Vault 111 and you get frozen. Okay? Out of nowhere, too. You're, just, you're in a fucking freezer. They freeze you to save you. And you wake up a couple hundred years later and you watch your wife get killed in the freezer across from you, they take your son, and they leave. You go back to sleep, and you wake back up. The vault completely empty, and you're on your own to go check out, to go back to your town and see what happened, where you meet Codsworth, and pretty much your ultimate goal is to bring Commonwealth back to normal. And then, boom, welcome to the story of Fallout 4. What you do from there is completely up, up to, to you. you. It's great. You also get to beat up bad guys. And you shoot them in the face. Or you can just explode their heads. You can do whatever you want. Right. It's great. Story mode is complemented by a lot of side quests. A lot of side... Just you don't understand! Just random events happen. How many side quests in the random events just there are? Just random fucking events. Like so ships flying out of nowhere. <laughs> where explosions just happen. Like, what the fuck happened? 
Did you just see that? I what did just fuck? see that. What the okay, fuck? Okay, let's go fucking explore it. Right. So you may be looking at your your objectives and your missions. You're like, okay, I need to go over to this town and do this thing. As you're walking, you'll pass by like four things, and you're just like, I can't. I can't go that way yet. I have to explore. You, you've got to explore. You have to explore. You just it, The story mode's great, and all the lore ties in together. I remember I was trying to clear out a bandit hole, uh, and as I was clearing it out, I was sneaking around. I'm a little sneaky son of a bitch. And as I was sneaking, the bandits were like, yeah, man, I, I grabbed a caravan the other day, and this guy said, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, that's super nice to know about the world. Boom, in the face, and I killed him. See, Pick up he, your lore wherever you can. we got different aspects to the game. He likes to tactically sneak around and shoot. I like to run in there and smack your fucking faces off. And that's all up to you as a gamer. You can choose what way you want to go. But so we'll good we'll segmentation into our, our gameplay. gameplay. Awesome. Gameplay is phenomenal. Gameplay. Let's talk about uh, the different types of gameplay. we got the combat system in this game. It's Fallout. It's Fallout Combat. You have the VAT system that can help you out if you want. And it's so cool because, like, the slow motion, they just won't stop. And it doesn't shoot. stop anymore. It just, it's like it's slow you see a dog motion. running at you, just going to kill you, and you're just like... Shoot in the chest. chest. So, yeah, the VAT system is definitely improved from there. And just the combat itself, the variety of guns that you can contribute into a into a, a fighting, you know, situation. You can make whatever the fuck you want to. That's right. awesome. And the combat's great. Uh, and, you know, leaning around corners, shooting is possible. I mean, there's just, it, every fight feels different. It depends on how you, you get to choose what kind of gameplay you want to, you know what I'm saying? You either be like, this kind of player, or you can just run and smack shit. Gameplay's kind of up to you. You can do whatever you want. And to, and to really complicate your gameplay is, is a very intricate and complex, yet surprisingly simple, leveling system. It's great. It's simple, for the aspects because you kind of work in a tier based right but, but kind of complex. complex because you need to choose what kind of style you want to make you can fuck but, up your character pretty fast and, you know you well, live we'll, with we'll it get to you that. live we'll get with to it that. if you do that so but. you spend 20 hours of the game you ain't starting over so how about graphics let's just jump into graphics now okay graphics are amazing okay it's fallout 4 and you're in a wasteland and they make it look beautiful yes shit is shit but it makes this shit looks beautiful okay it's a sparkly shit it is okay you're like oh my gosh this building is like oozing with radiation awesome yeah it's it looks amazing why well, i want to go bathe in it that's because it, it looks so good. i just want to be a child of what do they call child of a adam third arm coming child out of, of adam just like ooh, bathe me in the radiation right and you, well, you get your third arm you know yeah, yeah they I ask you about arm. a third arm if a third arm came out of your stomach what you do cut that bitch off let's go all <laughs> right but the graphics are amazing okay it's very good 60 frames per second it's like Companies can still make games at 60 frames per second yes. that are massive. Yes. Like, take fucking note, every other company out there. Bethesda slapped out Fallout 4, one of the biggest games we've seen, 60, 60 frames. frames per Looks second. beautiful. It's, oh my gosh. Smooth. I haven't really seen any, like, bugs. It's just amazing. So let's talk about enemy AI. Enemy AI is crazy. I'm going to start with ghouls, okay? Ghouls, ghouls are, are fucking crazy. You don't know what the fuck they're going to do. They can either charge at you and jump at you, throw their weight at you, and you're just like, what the fuck? And you got to get knocked back Right, you get knocked back a little bit. They can come up and bite you. They can come up and slash you. You don't know what the fuck they're going to do, okay? So be fucking prepared. And you think ghouls being a basic enemy, you kind of see them as that? You can't. No. Because no. when there's one ghoul, there's like at least five. And there's different types of ghouls. You get the glowy, you know, ghoul. Oh, you get yeah. the fucking pissed off ghoul. You get the... You just don't know what kind of... You get of the little mini get. ghouls. Have you seen those? No, I haven't seen the mini ghouls Yeah, I've gotten the mini ghoul before, too. I have not seen the mini ghoul yet. That's fucking crazy. Now, how about the just the bug enemies? Now, you may see bug enemies like, oh, cool, easy kill. You smack the crap out oh, of a beetle. You smack a mosquito. They, they'll surprise the fuck out of you, too. They swarm you. They mutate at the they last suck your fucking blood. second. You're like, oh, you're dead. Pff, mutated. Ah! It's crazy. And it's just not with that enemy. You can see it through multiple enemies. Multiple enemies, too. What's crazy is the super mutants, okay? They even act different. Like, there's just not, okay, it's a super mutant. No, no there's there fucking different. different types. You got leaders of super mutants that, like, give controls to other mutants. You got fucking suicide mutants that hold a mini nuke, charge it's up to you. Up. It's beeping, and you're like, holy fuck, explosion. <laughs> and you just die. You're just dead. It's a mini nuke in his hand. Now, and I want to talk really quickly. It's fucking crazy, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's crazy. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I literally was sat down like, what the fuck just happened? Now, I want to talk about raiders, too. Now, raiders being one of the more common enemies in the game as well, their AI is surprisingly good. There's some a little bit, there's some stupid raiders that are just like, oh my god, enemy, and there's bunched in groups of three. But when I was defending a, a building from raiders, like I could hear them circling outside, they shotgun the door down, busted ass in there, and were shooting at me. 
It's scary that they have power armor too. And like, they have power armor and they're smart and super dumb and super funny at the same time. It just I depends on I think the enemy. It just shows you the diversity. And then last thing I want to talk about in our segment right now, <coughs> let's talk about the build mode that's been introduced and the settlement improvements that are done. I'll let you it's surprising. It surprised the hell out of me when I first saw it. It's that. amazing. Let's let's go with the concept is amazing. You can like choose which you know, you want to send people to defend, you want them to farm, you want them to gather water, you want them to you can assign them tasks. You're a city manager essentially. And it's a part of that game that I didn't see coming as somebody who's coming into this game completely blind, didn't read a whole lot about it other than what we reported on through the buzz. Right. I try not to I had no spoiler. idea that was in the game. I didn't either. And I, I started it and I was like, it applies to a really small area of gaming that I think we all enjoy and that's the, the managing of okay. your resources, managing of, it makes, it makes you feel like you own that settlement. Agreed. It's yours. Agreed. Totally 100%. And Fallout came out with a app, uh, mobile game called Fallout Shelter and I think they wanted to show that aspect into Fallout 4 yeah. where you, you, know, you control a settlement. And they did it pretty well. Damn good. The only bad thing about that is a fucking building. It's making. terrible. It's so it's, hard. It's maybe there's a part of that we're missing though. I, I could know. be a part we're missing. I can't I make a fucking square, and it's a. I can't, can't make a fucking it. square, and they don't mesh well with each other. I, I don't know how to put a door. I don't, I don't know how to put a door on. How do you so, put a door on? You put so, the door there, and you can't attach anything. I think they knew it. it was going to be difficult, so they gave you prefabricated buildings. Like yeah, you know you what? You can't fucking those. do it either. You can build your, here. Here's our homemade building. And you can't make shift your buildings, which I tried to do. I I put the the blocks around, connected them as best I could, and then I filled the gaps with a doorway. I put a couple random boards that you can kind of place. And if you do that at first, at first when I did that, it was like everything's going great. I have this building now. I can start putting in rooms and stuff like that. Then I got to the fucking ceiling. <laughs> it did not work <laughs> because when you do the I makeshift boards, far. when you do the makeshift boards. The ceiling does not rest on top of them. So uh -huh. I have a corner with some ceiling. I got a random ceiling block there. Above my room's completely open. I can't so put ceilings. Rains. It yeah. rains into my bed. I woke up from a well-rested sleep to rain. So it's challenging. Maybe there's a part of it we're just missing, but... You can let us know that. They, they should have took it from first-person view to a third-person overview where you can build and, your... And just made it a little, a little easier. That'd be nice. All right, so every time we do a Buzz episode, we do a fuck yeah or fuck off segment, which is, if you followed us, you know, we take gaming news and we give our opinion on it. I have an idea. We should revolve it around Fallout. Great idea, Jace. Okay. Let's jump into it. At the beginning of the game, it starts off with a very quick explanation and controls, a brief moment in Vault 111, and then it lets you lose to look like John Cena! Hmm. So fuck yeah or fuck off. Fuck yeah. I like the fact that it shows you that you're by yourself. You're just looking from a freezer. <coughs> you don't know what the fuck is going on. I'd be confused. And it kind of wants you to give that, I feel like, wants to give you that kind of feeling too. And so you leave the vault and you just decide, okay, where do I start? Right. And that's up to you. So fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. <clears throat> now, at first, when I started playing the game and I started really taking the first reaction about how short the beginning of the game was and how short your stint in Vault 111 was, I wanted to say fuck off. I wanted to say that. Because I was like, well, damn, in every single other Fallout game, the social experiment that you go through, you spend an extended amount of time in that vault. In this game, it was quick. Then as I played, I realized this is what Fallout's all about. It's about getting out there and doing what you want. So, yeah, the short beginning sequence of this game benefited Fallout 4 tremendously. Fuck yeah. Great job making it short, simple, and letting us loose as quickly as possible. I can't stop looking at that. One of the best facial creation I don't know if that's real, but seen. if that is someone, you can, you probably could, because it's so you in could. depth. Yeah, no, it's so in depth. And even if this isn't real, I think it's funny. But if it isn't real, if you actually spend time, which I did not in the beginning of the I game, I didn't really either. But, but you could I spend probably you can days. See, oh my god, you could spend so days, good. dude. It's amazing. You can choose like literally. Oh, I want this cheek to look like this. I want this cheek to look like. It's this. amazing. You used to look. Uh, did you see Nigel Thornberry? <laughs> <laughs> someone nice. <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> it's so good. So let's keep, so let's let's keep talk going. about your robotic companion in the beginning of the game, Codsworth. Fuck yeah, he's amazing. He's not amazing at all. Say that. He's so terrible. He's so good. Like, he's not a burden to the game. I'm not like, fuck you, Bethesda, for putting him in the game. I, I'm glad you they did. You can choose him if you want to be He's so companion. dumb. He's so dumb. He's you hilarious. walk out of the vault, you're like, oh my god, it's 200 years later and my wife died. He's like, do you want to play checkers? Let's play some fucking checkers. He's no, I don't want to play checkers. He's hilarious. No, he's, he's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot. 
He's I like don't a, like him. A master Jace. He can literally say if you type in your name, he can say it. That's pretty there's cool, a, there's a list on like online where it goes naughty Codsworth and he says all these naughty words. Or he can say just normal <laughs> words too. Yeah. But I'm just names. saying it's fucking hilarious. He's an idiot and I hate him. Cowsworth so, can say your fucking name. It's my Master fu- Jace. That's fuck off for me. Fallout 4 introduces. I just want to say, it. I love his voice too. Master Jace. That's Jace. like the worst part of him. Master Jace. It's the worst. Look at this guy's face. Do you want to play checkers? His voice is the worst. Yes, I'd play checkers with you, Cowsworth. I uh, can't believe how much I disagree got, he with He reminds you. me of a butler. Master Jace. That's what makes him terrible. That's He's amazing. amazing. I hate him. Continue. Fallout 4 introduces a few new tools to assist you in your adventure in the commons while the first being the super suit. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah? Why? Fuck yeah. Because you can upgrade this shit, you can take it off, you can put it back on. It's not just like a, you carry around like in Fallout 3. Oh, you gotta carry all this heavy armor and decide when you want to wear it or not. No, it's like a freaking like... I don't know how to say it. It's like a vehicle almost. Yeah, it's, just, it's basically it's a, vehicle. a really good way to put it. It's, it's a, a vehicle, vehicle, essentially. Yeah, you can get and in and out of it. you can upgrade this. You can, depending on how you build your character, you can make this suit, like, super badass. And I haven't seen any armor that's better than it yet. Now, a uh, quick tip and trick before I give you my fuck yeah or fuck off on this. For those of us that are playing the game and those of you out there that are currently oh, playing it. we both have problems with this. I thought you couldn't get... I didn't know how to get out of it. I was like, we're going to spend the game in this. You know, where do I piss? I guess I piss myself. Right. No, but you got to go to those you got to go to this one of these stations right here. Here. When you're at that station, you press E if you're on the keyboard, or probably B, I'm guessing, on the controller. It's, it's or whatever it is. I yeah, play on the whatever. controller. I like the controller. And you, you back out of it. Okay, so just so you guys know that, my opinion on this, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Custom of, I, I think it makes you feel like one of those badasses in all the other Fallout yeah. games. It makes you feel awesome. And it, you can literally paint it like that. You, yeah. If you want to, like, you can join clans and stuff, and you can paint it towards that clan. That's super cool. Mine's got a vault tech look. That's it's, awesome. It's so cool. It's blue and yellow. And no fall damage. No, so the beginning of the game, when you yeah. get it, jump off the building, jump down on the ground, and just start shooting. And there's just a... It's so cool. It just cool. shakes. It's awesome. So yeah, fuck yeah for me as well. The next tool that Bethesda decided to put into Fallout 4 is a companion. Yes. Look at him! He's the coolest thing! He's so cute. He's he so just yawns and, and does his own little things occasionally. He's a dog. He's the first companion of many that you can get. Codsworth being the second, which oh, he Codsworth. loves. Just get off of it, Master man. Jace, can I uh, you know, assist you in your Fallout 4 Fuck experience. yeah to this dog. Fuck yes. yes. He does cool. He finds items for you. He, he does fights tricks. your enemies. He does do tricks. He, does, he can beg and he can sit and he can lit... And he's just his personality is great. He has happy barks. Like when you encountered, I encountered somebody and he happy barked at this person. And the guy's like, "Oh, hey there, little buddy. How you doing?" Yeah, it's so, so cool. cool. He's yeah. the coolest guy. And he's the coolest thing. Just, I want to go back on that. I just like how that, like the whole world like has com, you know, comments and statements and question things. Even your character does that, and even the companion does yeah, that. Yeah, it's awesome. It's amazing. He's great. He's one of the best things. To what add to that, fuck yeah for sure. Yeah. But to add to that, he's like like I said, the first of many. You can get human companions, and you know, depending on like how you're playing the game, they can actually like you or hate you. I got my companion to hate me because I'm a nice guy, and my companion's a terrible ass person <laughs> and wants to see the world burn apparently. And I'm like, can you hold this? And they're like, oh, now great, I'm your junk holder. I'm like, thanks for the snappy comment, bitch. And, Move you know, on. and even though the dog doesn't necessarily have that, pretty much loves you unconditionally, uh, there's a little bit of personality that comes out of the dog, too. I was talking to a, a character that was explaining something in the story, and my dog just happened to be in the background. He was just looking up like... And then he yawned. In the middle of the conversation, my dog just lets out this huge yawn. Are you weeds at Icebox? This whole world is like... <laughs> even my dog is like, man, this bitch is boring. Isn't I was like, that's awesome. You're bored. It's, it's I get cool. it. I get it. It's, it's fucking funny. But hold on. Before we move on one more time here, the companion, it, I think it's cool. Is like you're, If you get another companion, this companion will be used later in the game. I think it also it depends on what missions you do. You need that certain companion to fulfill that. I think it's cool. Yeah, the dog's it just important. Doesn't, yeah, it just Very doesn't important. throw that companion away. I love that. So, build mode allows you to take settlements <coughs> to the next level by improving buildings, adding security features, and giving residents commodities that they need to survive. Overall, that concept, fuck it's yeah, or fuck, fuck off. yeah. The overall concept. We talked about it a little yeah. bit, but let's let's get into it a little deeper. Why is it fuck yeah? Because, like you said, okay, you can have certain random events happen where ghouls or raiders will attack your settlements. Yep. And if you don't have defense, you're open just for those ghouls or, you know, raiders to whatever attack your village and kill your people. So you need to build defense. You need to have resources and food for your settle, you know, settlers to survive. Fucking and I think that's amazing. You can just assign them to whatever you need them to do. And it's like, like you said, like you become a city manager. Yeah, and I say fuck yeah. For the the fact is, is that it's. 
fairly simple. Right. The entire concept is simple. At the very big top right here, it goes over the different things that you need. Okay, in this example, safety is at zero. You have no defense. It's in red. You need to have safety. So that you know what you, you have to do. You can build turrets and shit. You can build watchtowers. You can build... I mean, you get attached to the people that are in your town, too. You're like, heck yeah, man. What's up? Like, I, I Although there's this one lot. old hag that just hates me. I know why you're here. You just want all the resources. It's like, bitch, I gave you the resources. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, like we said before, the building of a building is bad, but... Yes. That's a fuck no to that. That's a fuck, fuck no to that. that. Fuck out yeah, everything else. Everything else. Absolutely. Two words, work benches. Or is that one word? Whatever. Like whatever. Fuck yeah. I yeah. love it. It just shows more customability. Like, this game. I love that. You can customize everything, pretty much. The beauty of Fallout 4 is that it has, it focuses on graphics. It focuses on story. It focuses gameplay. on combat. It focuses on gameplay. It focuses on customization. They have taken almost every I aspect almost of a video game. customization on the first one, because anything, you can customize anything. Right. Every, every you area your of game, a video you game. You customize your weapons. You customize your super suit. You customize your face. Everything. You customize the customization of everything. It's amazing. And I can't believe Bethesda had the ability to take every individual aspect of a video game and just drill as far into it as they can. And if you want a, you know, a machete to become a serrated blade of epicness you of can doom do with electricity coming out of the edges of it, and you can next thing you know you got a battery on the bottom of it, you can do that. You can do that. It's phenomenal. Now what? We're going to take a short break, but... You new vault dwellers out there, we got tips and tricks of how to survive in the wasteland, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello everyone, we're The Hive. I'm Jace, and this is Buffalo Prime. We just got a couple messages for you. As we enter the holiday season, we just want to start by saying thank you to our veterans out there that have served for our country so that we can remain free. So thanks again, and happy Veterans Day. And as we come up to the Thanksgiving holiday, we want to wish all of our viewers and all of our subscribers a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. All right, guys, Fallout 4 is a huge game with arguably 400 or more hours. It really depends on if you're like us and you like to explore and things like that. So with this huge game in front of you, as gamers that are new with it as well, we want to give you some tips and tricks. So let's, let's jump right in. We'll explore back and everything. Forth That's my first tip. Is there's random loot everywhere from items, you know, armor. Just explore. It's random. And I it's literally found a, a freaking laser uh, pistol. And it was like, I had this awesome stat. I died. I went back to the house and it ended up being a pipe pistol. So it just showed me that these items are random. Explore everything. You can find badass loot. And you know, and to kind of piggyback on your point, um, save when you find good stuff. Oh, I just clicked save everything. And when I open my pit boy, automatically saves. Because... No, I'm, I'm talking about save your game. Uh, that's that what way I'm saying. if you die, you don't... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I open it so every time I open my pit boy it automatically saves my progress. Yes. Because I died good. and I lost about an hour of gameplay at one point. And I was like, are you fucking serious? Yeah, so make sure to save if you find good loot. Yes. Uh, my first advice to you guys is to take your time in combat. Obviously, there's situations where you can build your character where you don't have to worry about that. You can bust ass in there, crack skulls, especially if you're entering like a low-level area. But in the beginning of the game, when you enter a raider encampment, take your time. Take your time and analyze the situation because if you don't, you're going to run into a building that has like five enemies in it, your dog's going to die, and you're going to be like, oh my god, he sounds so sad when he's dying, and then you're going to die. So take your time in combat. There's no need to rush. You can take out entire encampments of raiders on your own if you just take your time. Unless you mean I just bust in there and I, I'm super, I put the toughness and uh, my strength and then my, my, my smash heads. This guy. But at the same time, I, I do always look back before I'm like, okay, we got an enemy up here. So I'm going to run this way, go up there, smash his head, drop down, then smash your head. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Otherwise, you, you just, yeah. Super suits, they're very important, and I'm going to tell you the tricks and tips of how to make a badass super suit, and also how to get out the fucker. Like we said, you just got to go to those power point stations, and uh, you can craft there, you can repair there, and get out of it. Um, every location has, oh well, not every location, but every most major locations. city yeah, most has time. one. And you can just keep your super suit there. Diamond City has one, Sanctuary Hill. You just put it there, and it will show you on the map where your super suit is located. And you just fast travel there, pick it up. Why are we calling it a super suit? It's power armor. Let's call it what it is. Power, power armor. armor. And you can, like I said, upgrade it. Depending on how you build your character, you need some uh, armorer, you need some blacksmith, and you need some science, depending on what kind of super power armor you're making. So those are some tips and tricks to that. So... When I'm in, in the middle of combat, I found this out really early in the game, and it's a great tip to have. It's not only your dog companion, but most companions that you get as well. Do not waste your stim packs on them if they fall, unless it is a last, like you're going to die without trying to bring them back up. 
Okay, so sometimes my dog will end up going out there because I haven't directed him to stay near me. He'll go out and he'll die, essentially. He'll jump on an enemy and then there's a turret that takes him out. Okay, your first reaction in the beginning of the game is like, I need to get down to my dog, I need to heal him now. Don't do it. Don't waste your stim packs. Use them on yourself. Save your stim packs for you. Because when you die, you, your game starts where your last save is. If your companion dies, it just has to wait until whenever you clear out all the enemies and then oh, your yeah. companion will come back up. Or you just hide and your companion will show up. Okay, do not waste your stim packs on your enemy. It's hard at first, but once you get the hang of it, you save them for yourself. I think it was so funny. The dog charged at a death claw, and I was like, oh, okay, good luck. Smacked once, and it went, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Don't right. waste your stim packs on him. I'm going to go over there and stim pack it. Teach the dog a lesson. <laughs> That's mean. That's anyway, go ahead. Like you're beat the shit out of it. <laughs> Be wary of legendary enemies. I... You can get them like really, you know, far down low where they're almost dead, and all of a sudden it's like it's mutated and it gains health, it gets stronger, and it becomes a stronger enemy. So if you see legendary in the name, get ready for a pretty epic fight. Big fight, absolutely. <sighs> now this is—it seems like common sense, but I guarantee you, while you're playing it, you're gonna die. And you're gonna be like, I should have listened to Buffalo Prime. Use your nades and use your minds. They're easy to forget about. The game gives them away. Like, essentially, you could walk up past a trash can and be like, oh, there's five mines and in here. they do a good Sweet. amount of damage, too. They do an amazing amount of damage. The blast radius is fantastic. You got that turret that's held up there that's pretty strong, chuck a nade at it. Yes. You got an enemy of, a group of enemies, three or four of them, chuck a nade at them. Hell, you find a giant mutant, chuck a nade at them! What I like also is you if you throw that grenade next to a car, that car will actually explode, too. And the I explosion, love that. Explosions are so good. Oh, my goodness. And you they know it's about to explode. It like so good. The, the oh screen kind of gets like a like clear look and it's like, it's crazy. I've never... It's so good. I've never been left speechless by the graphics of a video game before, except for the explosions in Fallout 4. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. So good. Let's, let's, let's keep this ball rolling. Have your dog fetch, okay? If you're in a random yeah, area, do you, know, you don't know, all, like, if there's items around, just go, hey, dog, go look around. You can Do ask your dog that. You can yeah. tell your dog to do that. To look around in the area and see if you missed something important. And he can go look. If not... And there's nothing there. So now, I will say, randomly. I will say, and you can check this out in one of my Let's Plays, I did ask the dog if there were enemies nearby, and the dog's like, nope. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. I take like five steps forward, a feral dog, an alpha feral dog, just swarm the shit out of me, and I die. So be wary when you ask your dog if there's enemies around. I guarantee it's probably good, but there's going to be, you know, just double, double check anyway. This is pretty important, and it might be too late, but maybe not. Maybe you're thinking about playing the game. I would think about how you want to level prior to level. Yep, I'm pretty sure I fucked up. But I'm 20 hours in, I ain't going to start over. I know. I My character's mine. I just want to do everything. I want to have points in here. I want to do something everything. over here. You have to sacrifice here. early on. you got to determine how you want to make your character. So at first, when you open the leveling sheet, you're going to be like, holy crap, this looks awesome. Holy crap, it's really complicated. Holy crap. Yeah. It's complicated Take, depending how you want to make your character. It, it depends on your level of understanding and how much you want to understand it as well. Yeah. Take your time. Learn what you're going to go and learn what you're trying to do. Get an idea of what, how do you want to fight, how do you want to be, and then take it on from there. I wouldn't say, we make it sound like it's a difficult task. I wouldn't say it's difficult, it's simple, it just, you can't do everything. You got to choose. You can't put something in strength if you're trying to do science stuff. You got to have intelligence to do science. If you want to become a tough badass and go into toughness, you need to have strength. It's just, it's give and take. You got to choose. I think I fucked up already. Last thing here is side quests. Not only are they reward, you know, you get a lot of cool rewards from, but they're enjoyable and funny. I spent side quests one, are great. yes, that's like that's gonna be like three. That's gonna be ninety percent of your gameplay. It's so great and they're funny. I haven't. You said you found some boring quests or side quests. I have some of them are. They're I haven't yet. Some of them are repetitive. So, I spent one of the quest line side quests building this ship up. And the, the robot on there was a captain. He was telling me, we're going to make this ship fly. And I said, whatever, dude. I'll help you get your... <laughs> you replaced all the power, replaced the engines, replaced everything. Lo and behold, this thing took off. It went in the air and it looked magnificent. And then it crashed into another building. <laughs> and I could not help but laugh. It literally went from one side of the water to the other side of the water in air and crashed into another building. Great. And I just, I just cannot help but Bethesda. drop the controller and laugh. And there's a bunch of ideas of, and areas of humor, too. You could be in, raiding a raider encampment, and they're like, man, I must be seeing things. i got to lay off the jet. You know, the raider's like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not get crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep up the drug <laughs> use. <laughs> I, I don't know humor. how many times I've been addicted to a psycho. Yeah. You're now addicted. Oh, that is amazing, by the way, side note here. 
you take psycho fuck i'm gonna fucking kill everything and i'm like holy shit yeah. he literally is going psycho i i'm, I'm afraid of drugs yeah. in that game but you i know get there's addicted. benefits so. i'm addicted <laughs> with one week of fallout 4 in the books let's talk about our overall thoughts about the game you know and i'd like to consider myself a fairly impartial gamer but he fucking loves it. i love it he fucking loves it you know and i take games like destiny and i take games like until dawn black ops i i, I try to enjoy every game and i but i look about games but then you see fallout 4 and it beats destiny i it tried so hard this. in the first it beats that in the first week of this. <laughs> in the first week of gameplay i i was trying to find where did they mess up where are they going to be able to improve this is probably the closest thing to perfect I've seen. The only thing I can really th think of is the building system. That's, that's literally that's, that's it. it. If not that's that big your of a deal, if that's your if that's your problem, <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's not. Oh man, it's so good, so good, so good. What do you think? It's it's really good. I love the side quests. I love how the, you got some comic you know comic relief. You got some action. The story is great. I mean, it's. it's how about this Fallout Four? is one of the few games, and it's such a relief for us gamers, that a game that had so much hype going into it that actually beat the shit out there. of the hype and went beyond it. Literally, I it was, I was every, telling a friend the other day, hype. I haven't played a game where, you know, uh, lately games have been so disappointing. They're like, oh. Evolve! Okay, let me put my little... Need for Speed. Oh my Halo god! Halo 5. Well, I think the beginning, The beginning of Destiny when that first came out. The beginning of Destiny. That Talk about not living up to your hype. Fallout 4, I just, I can't, they I could not have out. fathomed... You're I could right. not have fathomed the amount of hype this game could have gotten. You know, if everybody knew everything that was going to go on. I mean, the game's exceeded every expectation that I yeah. had. Yeah. And more. And more. So, uh, let's do another really quick commercial bit, but I'm going to do it right here. Uh, I do have a new segment that has come out for The Hive. It's called The Stampede. And it's, it's amazing. A, it's a gaming talk show where I sit down with Let's Play YouTubers. Um, it's notable names, Zenimite, uh, Melisior, who's also doing a Let's Play of Fallout 4. And then I have had a kind of a friendly competition there. Uh, it's no contest. He's a very good Let's Player. Uh, cheap Tard Bill, who takes cheap games or free games and, and does a really quick snippet about them. Broforce. He has a Let's Play of Broforce. I bought Broforce because of that Let's Play. <laughs> it looks awesome. And plenty of other Let's Players. And the reason I want to put this in here is that I want to direct you guys to these. They're really entertaining. They're awesome. These Let's Players are great to talk to. And if you're a Let's Player watching, I want to put you on my show. And I also would love to have your questions. So if you want your name in our description section. He has funny sections. Like, there was one where, what video game character would you have sex with? That was a real question. And we had, there was we, a discussion about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you want to ask a question, I'll put it on the show. You'll be you'll have your little moment of fame within the hive. So that definitely is something I wish you, and I hope you guys check out. So let's wrap up this segment with some Black Ops 3. All right, Black Ops 3. I'm the only just, one here that Just owns nail it. it. Just nail it. I, I will. So Black Ops 3 came out a couple days before Fallout, which was super unfortunate for us that are Call of Duty fans and Fallout fans, because Fallout just took all of our, oh my god, Call of Duty's, oh my god, Fallout. Like, Call of Duty's great. You've seen the picture but where you, you see a full, full basket of, uh, you know, Call of Duty, but there's no on the shelf of Fallout 4. It's completely, it's, it's got to, man. Now, it's Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is an amazing game so far. Again, first impressions of the game. I'll talk to you about story. Uh, the zombie mode and multiplayer. We'll start with story first. I'm just in the very beginning of the game. I've gotten through a couple of combat zones. They introduced a brand new uh, level of difficulty called realistic. And literally, you get shot once. It's you're dead. Go back to your checkpoint. If you were shot and hit once, it doesn't matter where in your body you were hit, you were going to die. Tell me about the zombies, man. It's hard, it's big, and it's long. Just like the ladies love it. Yeah, that's true. It's... <laughs> Anyway, uh, so the zombies mode is kind of a film noir setting. So kind of like, uh, you know, L.A. Noir, um, you know, games like that, movies like that. And it's what's really interesting about it is that it's so, it's just massive. You have no idea how big the zombies mode is because you're, you're, you're in the first area, which feels a lot like the first Black Ops zombies where you're killing people in the windows and you're boarding them up and you're doing this thing. And then you open one gate and the world is literally ten times as big. Than that starting area. Well, you start in an alleyway and then you branch into a city. It's huge. You have no idea where anything is. It's going to take you a couple playthroughs to even understand what you have to do, where to find things, and how to combat the much what smarter about the zombies. zombies. Man? So much smarter. Oh my goodness. They're faster. They're mean. There's different types of enemies. You know how they used to have the dogs that came yeah. out of nowhere and would come at you? Now they got these flying things that do the same thing, essentially, that all over the map. That's scary. It's, it's tough, but it's fun. Now, obviously, my bread and butter is multiplayer i used to be a black ops one clan leader i used to play a little bit competitively so black ops and Treyarch games I, I take 
to heart. I take them seriously and I, I take them critically. So if you are a fan of Black Ops 1, you need to play Black Ops 3. It's essentially, it feels like Black Ops 1, just brought into the modern era. Black Ops 3 took exosuits and got rid of them, which is a huge benefit already. They already went right by doing that. Now, there's some aspects of it that stuck around. You can run on, you know, walls. And essentially, wall running is the really only practical use for it. I mean, they from kind one of point have exosuits because they're allowed to. to You're allowed it. to do a jump and a double jump, but you, there's no almost no point to it because there's not a lot of areas that you can reach vertically on these maps. So you're not able to jump over buildings. So you're like, oh, I'm going to walk up to a building and somebody's up here shooting at you and over here and over here and over here. In Black Ops 3, you're like, oh, I'm going to go into a building and there's no way to get on top of it. You can wall jump around it maybe, but it depends on the map. And uh, so there is a little bit of that, but they've simplified the game. The maps make sense. They're not, you know, one area you jump into and there's 14 different ways to get into it, which is Call of Duty is so good at doing that. And it pissed me off. Black Ops 3 maps make sense. You have the ability to bunker down. You have the ability to plot out your map. Everything makes sense, and there's key parts of the map that you can I recognize. I agree with that. When I was playing the beta, you could put, like, turrets in certain areas because you, those you, were the only ways to get in. Exactly. You could bunker down, yeah. which is good. Now, obviously, camping's a part of that game, too, but there are ways to combat that, and if you're a good player, you know how to do that. So, get good. Uh, the pick 10 system is simplified. The creative class system is way better. It's not bogged down by exosuit abilities and crap like that. It makes sense. The guns are balanced. The multiplayer experience in general. Oh, man. That was really confusing advanced warfare. All the it's fucking... Oh, terrible. Yeah. So anyway, if you are a fan of Call of Duty and never been in the past, Black Ops 3 is your game. That's all we got for time for today. So if you liked what you saw, please comment below. Let us know what you thought. Also, subscribe. You can email us at highguys at gmail.com. This is our segment on Fallout 4 and Black Ops 3. So for all of us here at Hive Guys Studio, have a great one.